Sarah and I were just talking about you. We need you to settle a question for us. Sarah's involved. So this question will be offensive. Yes, probably. Sorry. You make friends with spirits in the Fade. So, um, are there any that are more than just friends? If you know what I mean. Oh, for... really? Look, it's a natural thing to be curious about. For a twelve-year-old? It's a simple yes or no question. Nothing about the Fade or spirits is simple. Especially not that. <laughs> so you do have experience in these matters. I did not say that. Don't panic. It'll be our little secret. Ass. <laughs> now who's twelve? <laughs> that is one of the best conversation pieces right there in all of Dragon Age Inquisition, I think. <laughs> oh, I love it. Welcome everybody, welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition in the viewer driven story. I've got several questions that you guys are going to have a big chance now here to, uh, to make decisions for in this video. Well, let's just say there's at least two, right? But that's probably going to influence a lot of other choices, I think, uh, perhaps later on down the line. Let's just go ahead and start with the first one. I've gotten to the point now where I can choose a specialization for my warrior Kunari chick here. She can be, of course, either a champion, she could be a reaver, she could be a templar. Let me know what you guys think you would like to see her specialization as in this playthrough, in this series for Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, some people are going to be a little bit more sensitive to, I suppose, the the lore, like, oh, well, it only makes sense if Canaries don't do this and they do that instead or something like that. Honestly, I don't know. I, I honestly think that we shouldn't limit ourselves. Certainly, we haven't up to this point, right? We sided with the mages. Um, we shouldn't limit ourselves uh, to what the lore says is correct about what Kunaris should and shouldn't be doing. Let's just do what's fun, right? I'm thinking what I what I would like to see for Fox whatever Grey odd Ally reason. Should be inside that cave. Yes, you are correct, Solus. Thank you. What I would actually like to to do possibly is keep Blackwall as our champion, right? Because he's just awesome as a champion, godlike even. And as a support warrior, I could go as a Templar, or I could just go full on into Reaver and go just crazy damage with uh, Reaver abilities, or maybe even kind of like a hybrid like I did before with um, uh, the Sword and Shield Reaver. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with uh, the variety of builds that I've done up to this point. So think about that. Think about like what kind of builds, like for example, you would like to see this warrior for the viewer-driven story. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, let's meet up with Hawk. Glad you made it. I just got here myself. My contact with the Warden should be at the back of the cave. A group of Wardens were protecting a villager from corpses, out near Crestwood. They were likely hunting my friend. I'm glad they didn't come looking for people to help in here. They might well be good men, but they've been given bad orders. Hmm. Alright. Let's go meet with the contact. Lots of mushrooms here. Ooh, obsidian. I will definitely stop for some obsidian. Mushrooms I think I'm good on. Although, I don't know. <laughs> It always seems like every time I stop collecting something, later on, I need it. Let me go ahead and pick up some of these mushrooms. I guess. Just us. I brought the Inquisitor. Wait. You have a Grey Warden with you. Warden Blackwall. You're Blackwall? 
Uh, Duncan, my mentor, he spoke of you. Duncan. Of course. Good man. I'm Alistair. It's an honor to meet all of you. I wish it was someplace nicer. Wow, this is so weird, man. <laughs> I have been doing all of my previous playthroughs with it being as Shroud, not Alistair. And, and that's the same voice actor too, isn't it? Wow, that's just, that's trippy as hell. Are you the Alistair who fought the Archdemon with the hero of Ferelden? I need to change my name. Yes, that was me. War, betrayal, dark spawn, all lots of fun. And made for excellent stories, I'm sure. Nobody cares about that anymore. I answer to Warden Commander Clarell now. Like everyone else. <laughs> He's even got some, kind of the same attitude as he did from uh, Origins as well. This is, this is such a nostalgia trip. I'll take all the help I can get. I know the Wardens have troubles of their own. I wonder, though, might those troubles have anything to do with Corypheus? When Hawk killed Corypheus, the Wardens thought the matter resolved. But Archdemons don't die from simple injury. I feared Corypheus might have the same power, so I, I started to investigate. I found hints, but no proof. And then, not long after, Every warden in Orlay began to hear the calling. I recall that being a bad thing. But I don't recall you telling me about all this. It was a secret. A very dangerous one. I try to actually keep a few of my oaths to the wardens. You think Corypheus is using this calling to control the Grey Wardens? Not precisely. When a Warden hears the calling, it means the corruption inside us will soon kill him. And every Grey Warden in Orlais is hearing that right now. They think they're dying. Yes, I think Corypheus caused this somehow. If all the Wardens die, who will stop the next Blight? That's what has them so terrified. And then they do something desperate. Which is, of course, what Corypheus wants. Is the calling they're hearing real, or is Corypheus mimicking it somehow? I have no idea. Before all this, I'd barely heard of Corypheus. I didn't even know he was supposed to be a magister until I started digging around. Right now, all that matters is the Wardens are acting like they're going to die. You said all the Wardens are hearing the calling. Does that include you? And also you, Blackwall? Unfortunately, yes. When I'm talking or fighting, I can almost ignore it. But whenever things are quiet, I can hear it. It's like a song you can't get out of your head. Damned annoying, frankly. I do not fear the calling. And worrying about it only gives it power. Anything Corypheus does will only strengthen my resolve. How can Corypheus make all these wardens hear the calling? I have no idea. I suppose it's part of what he is. Corypheus is tied to the Blight, and not just a product of it like most Darkspawn. Wardens are connected to the Darkspawn too. That's how he seems able to control Wardens who get too close to him. And that's likely what he's doing here as well. Somehow. So the Wardens are making some last desperate attack on the Darkspawn. I saw what a blight did to Ferelden. If Wardens hadn't stopped it, there'd be no more Thedas. Warden Commander Clarell proposed some drastic things, blood magic and such, to prevent further blights before we die. I protested. Maybe too loudly. And Clarell sent guards and... Well... Here I am. Wardens were gathering here, in the Western Approach. It's an old Tevinter ritual tower. I'm going to investigate. I could use some help. Let's go. Man, that feels that I can't even begin to explain 
for those of you that didn't play Dragon Age Origins, I'm, I'm gonna assume most of you did though. How crazy is that? And it feels like such a wildly different experience too as Alistair, even though I know it's pretty much everything that Shroud says, like almost word for word, right? But it's Alistair doing the talking and... Hopefully we'll find some answers in the Western approach. Though I fear what those answers will be. I've seen too much blood magic to ever trust where it leads. Right. Um, it's just, it's, man, I, <laughs> I'm kind of almost regretful, but not really, because I, I do like Shroud, but almost regretful that I, I didn't try it with Alistair, uh, sooner. Let's go. Oh, nothing, uh, nothing else from Hawk, I guess. Let's examine this. Uh, regarding the calling, yeah, okay, I'm pretty familiar with the calling. Alistair, anything, any, anything else I should know? We should get to that ritual tower in the Western Approach, ideally before it lives up to its name. Was the hero of Ferelden involved in all this? I'm not sure. After we defeated the Archdemon, he was made Warden Commander of Ferelden. He disappeared some time ago. Not long before I started investigating rumors of Corypheus. He may have joined the Orlesian Wardens after I went into exile. If so, hopefully he'll be on our side. But I wouldn't count on it. When we fought the Archdemon, he did things that... He walks a dark path. You were there, weren't you? You helped fight the Archdemon. <laughs> I'm going to be answering that question for the rest of my life. Yes, I was there. It was big. The hero of Ferelden was brave. <laughs> but that was ten years ago. What have you done for us lately, Alistair? New times. New problems. What's it like, being a warden? Oh, it's wonderful. You get fresh peaches delivered every morning, first choice of local village girls, and bunnies too. Well, maybe it's not that. Not even close to that. I watched my brothers die at Ostagar soon after I joined. I never thought I'd see Wardens kill themselves. Why were the Wardens trying to kill you? When Clarell started talking blood magic and demons to deal with the calling, I said it wasn't a good idea. First, it was awkward silences, some coughing. But when I mentioned Corypheus, things really went wild. The Warden Mages said I was interfering called me a traitor. Funny how often that happens to me. You mentioned Warden Commander Clorel. Is she behind this? She's the one who summoned me and the other Wardens to Orlay when we started hearing the calling. I don't know her well. She's a mage. Smart, careful, determined. The sort of mage the Templars told me to keep a close watch over. It makes her the best kind of Warden. Or at least I would have thought so. Maybe the Templars aren't wrong about everything. Do you think she's helping Corypheus willingly? Or was she duped? Clorel would never serve something that looks like a Darkspawn willingly. I heard about an advisor of some kind, though. Maybe we'll learn more at the Western Approach. Corypheus was held in a Warden prison, right? So the Warden should know all about him. You'd think the Wardens would share information with each other, but they're really big on keeping secrets. Maybe they think some knowledge is too dangerous, I don't know. I only found out about Corypheus after I started digging for information. Even then, it wasn't much. For most Wardens, he'd be nothing more than an old legend dead long ago. If they knew of him at all. We'll talk later. Alright, it's time to head to the Western Approach. Welcome to the Western Approach. We've cited Warden activity to the Southwest, but no one's been close enough to figure out what they're doing. Between the sandstorms and the vicious wildlife, we haven't made it far out here. One of my men got too close to a poison hot spring and gave me a slightly delirious report of a high dragon flying overhead. In short, this might just be the worst place in the entire world. Be careful out there. 
Well, it's good to know what I'm in for. Sorry I don't have more for you. We intercepted a Venatory messenger and, uh, persuaded him to give up the orders he was carrying. We have them here. This entire place. It just feels like something's not right. Be careful. Glad you could make it. We've seen lights coming from the tower. Blood magic, I'd wager. You can smell it. Or see the corpses. You take point. I'll guard your backs. Wait! No! Warden Commander Clarell's orders were clear. This is wrong! Remember your oath. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. In death. I'm sorry. Sacrifice! Oh. Find it just as I showed you. Inquisitor, what an unexpected pleasure. Lord Livius Eremond of Virantium, at your service. I'm guessing you're not a warden. But you are. The one Clarell let slip. And you found the Inquisitor and came to stop me. Shall we see how that goes? It looks like you've already done some of my work for me. What, him? We simply needed his blood. Oh, were you hoping to garner sympathy? Maybe make the wardens feel a bit of remorse? Wardens, hands up, hands down. Corypheus has enslaved them. They did this to themselves. You see, the calling had the wardens terrified. They looked everywhere for help. Including Tavinta. Yes, and since it was my master who put the calling into their little heads, we in the Venatori were prepared. I went to Clarell full of sympathy, and together, we came up with a plan. Raise a demon army, march into the deep roads, and kill the old gods before they wake. Corypheus marching across Orlais with an army of demons. That was in the future I saw at Redcliffe. And now you know how it begins. Sadly for the Wardens, the binding ritual I taught their mages has a side effect. They are now my master's slaves. This was a test. Once the rest of the Wardens complete the ritual, the army will conquer Thedas. So Corypheus influenced the Wardens and made them do this ritual? <laughs> made them? No! Everything you see here... The blood sacrifices to bind the demons, the Wardens did it of their own free will. Fear is a very good motivator, and they were very afraid. That's a lie. The Grey Wardens are heroes. They would never do this willingly. The Grey Wardens care about nothing save stopping blights. They will do anything to accomplish that. You should have seen Clarell agonize over the decision. Burdens of command, I suppose. Why would the Wardens try to kill the old gods? A blight happens when Darkspawn find an old god and corrupt it into an archdemon. If someone fought through the deep roads and killed the old gods before they could be corrupted... Woof. No more blights. Ever. The Wardens sacrifice their lives and save the world. 
That's madness. For all we know, killing the old gods could make things even worse. Well then, it's a good thing I'm taking this demon army off their hands. Why would Clarell risk using demons? Demons need no food, no rest, no healing. Once bound, they will never retreat, never question orders. They are the perfect army to fight through the deep roads. Or across all A. Now they are bound to my master. Do you really want to see the world fall to the Blight? What do you get out of this? The Elder One commands the Blight. He is not commanded by it, like the mindless Darkspawn. The Blight is not unstoppable or uncontrollable. It is simply a tool. Somebody's certainly a tool. As for me, <laughs> while the Elder One rules from the Golden City, we, the Venatori, will be his god-kings here in the world. That's all I needed to know. Oh, please. The Elder One showed me how to deal with you in the event you were foolish enough to interfere again. That mark you bear, the anchor that lets you pass safely through the veil, you stole that from my master. He's been forced to seek other ways to access the Fade. When I bring him your head, his gratitude will be... Ah! There's a whole lot of demons coming. That's badass looking. People are like, you don't even need to use the technical view. No, but it's still awesome to use. Look at that. It's badass. All right, so we got a spellbinder guy here. Another spellbinder guy here. I'm going to give the command to have the, my allies focus on the spellbinders while I keep the rest of the demons busy. Did that? That might have been too far away to actually get their attention properly. Let's spread out these guys. Get to work. There. Get that guy. Wow, is that guy dead already? No way. Nope, somebody else died though. Maybe one of the smaller demons. Alright. Um, yep, stick with the plan. Why are you guys up on the rage demon? Get on the spellbinder. Alright. Here we go. This guy now. Holy good bastard. Wow, that was it? So, that went well. It did. You were right. Thanks to the ritual, the Warden Mages are enslaved to Corypheus. And the Warden Warriors? Oh, of course. It's not real blood magic until someone gets sacrificed. Eremons lied to the Wardens. They were trying to prevent future blights. With blood magic and human sacrifice. Hawk, they made a mistake, but they thought it was necessary. All blood mages do. Everyone has a story they tell themselves to justify bad decisions. And it never matters. In the end, you are always alone with your actions. I may know where the Wardens are. Eremond fled that way. There's an abandoned Warden fortress in that direction. Adamant. I guess they didn't want to summon a demon army out in public. The Warden and I will scout out Adamant and confirm that the other Wardens are there. We'll meet you back at Skyhold. Awesome. Well, yeah, that was uh, a really smooth encounter. I was expecting more uh, 
more carnage from um, <clears throat> from those ice mages, but um, I'm actually, if I remember correctly, hang on a second. Ah, damn it. Yep, I thought so. I've actually still got it on hard since the previous mission, so that's the reason why it's uh, it was as quick and virtually painless as it was. But then again, I've never really had trouble with that fight, even on uh, Nightmare difficulty, to be really honest. You just gotta know who you've got to target, and it's usually the mages first. <laughs> In fact, I don't I can't think of any fight in the entire game that if there exists mages that they shouldn't be your primary target to bring down first cuz they can just do all kinds of crazy damage with those uh those mines, especially like the fire mine dudes and ah oh, just it's crazy. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, remember, please, to let me know in the comment section below what you want to see the specialization for our Inquisitor Haika, a Kunari warrior. Anything goes. Don't uh, don't don't feel confined to lore or anything like that. Let's just have fun with this, right? Be it champion, be it uh, Templar, be it Reaver. But uh, like I said, I think what I recommend is that we keep. Blackwall as our uh, as our champion tank, and then we could make uh, Heika, for example, either a Templar, and she could do some really amazing uh, demon ass whooping, or we could go Reaver, and she can just like go berserk all the time and do all kinds of crazy damage that way. Also, one other thing, we have to decide, and and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you guys to say this now, but keep in mind, right? There is going to be that part in the future, and it, that choice is going to come, where whether we decide to choose Hawk, or we choose, I guess now, Alistair. You know what I'm talking about. It's a future mission, right towards the end, and one of those two does something really, really vital. Start thinking about that now, because by the time we get to that mission, I want to make sure that we already have that, uh, that kind of decision made as far as... Oh, we're gonna, I've got hiccups. <laughs> How we're going to proceed from there. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks again for all your support. Let me know what you think overall in the comment section below. Click the like button to support the viewer-driven story series of Dragon Age Inquisition here on my channel. And stay subscribed. More frequent videos, not just weekend releases, are coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.